Generally, organisms differ each other in their modes of deriving nutrients from the environment. Based on the mode of obtaining food, organisms are classified into two types. They are autotrophs, heterotrophs. Hence, there are mainly two modes of nutrition. They are autotrophic nutrition heterotrophic nutrition After learning about nutrition in plants let us learn about the same in animals it is called heterotrophic nutrition each organism is habituated to live in its own environment the form of nutrition taken by the animal varies based on the type and availability of food materials and also how it is obtained by the organism. For example, if the food source is static such as grass or movable such as a deer, there is a difference in how the food is accessed and how the parts of body are involved in obtaining the food by a cow and a lion. Different organisms have different strategies for consuming the food. Few organisms break down the food material outside the body and then digest it. Examples, bread molds, yeast, mushrooms, etc. Some other organisms like amoeba take in whole food material inside their bodies and then break down into small pieces. This depends upon the digestive system of each organism. Some other organisms like cuscuta, lice, leeches and tapeworms take the nutrition from plants and animals without killing them. Let us learn how organisms obtain their nutrition. Now, let us learn about nutrition in human beings. When compared to the digestive system of other organisms, human digestive system is very complex where different parts perform different functions by using various digestive juices and enzymes. Image on the screen shows the elementary canal of man. The elementary canal is a long tube extending from the mouth to the anus as indicated in the image. This tube has various regions which perform different functions. Generally, every one of us get doubt about what happens to the food once it enters into our body and how it gets digested in the elementary canal. Let us learn more. Usually everything we eat passes through the same digestive area. The process of taking food into the body is called ingestion. Naturally, the food has to be processed to generate simpler particles from the complex substances because the particles must be small enough to be picked up by our body. The texture also needs to be easily absorbed. Let us discuss in detail about the steps involved in the passage of food through elementary canal or gut. The food we eat is chewed by our teeth in the mouth. This chewed food is mixed with saliva to make it wet and slippery. The saliva is produced by three pairs of salivary glands that are situated at the side of the jaw and below the tongue. The tongue helps in mixing the food and forwarding it to the next part and the lower jaw also helps in the whole process. These parts help in the smooth passage of food through our elementary canal to the stomach. Saliva contains an enzyme amylase named as tyalin which helps to break down the complex substances of food into simpler ones so that they can be used by the body with the help of enzymes. This process is termed as digestion. Let us now learn about the movement of food from esophagus to stomach. It is technically called peristaltic movement. 
the soft food that is mixed with saliva passes through esophagus or food pipe to the stomach by a wave like movement called peristaltic movement in the stomach the food gets mixed with gastric juice and hcl which is in a semi solid condition the digestion of food goes on as most proteins are broken down into smaller molecules with the help of enzyme pepsin acting on them chyme is the process in which the proteins and carbohydrates of the soft slimy substance of food are broken down the food now passes from the stomach to the small intestine which contains ring like muscles called as sphincters These sphincters are responsible for opening the valve so that an only small quantity of the food material enters into the small intestine at a time. Let us learn about the small intestine. The small intestine is the longest part of the alimentary canal. Here, the complete digestion of carbohydrates, proteins and fats takes place. Small intestine receives the secretion of liver and pancreas for the purpose of digestion the process of digesting the fats by converting them into small bubble like substances with the help of the bile juice that is secreted from liver is called emulsification proteins and lipases for fats are digested with the help of enzymes like trypsin present in pancreatic juice walls of the small intestine secrete intestinal juice which helps in breaking down of small molecules of proteins into further smaller molecules the same process is repeated for fats the process of digestion of carbohydrate starts in the mouth it resumes in the stomach when the food is converted into an alkaline form here the enzymes responsible for the breakdown of carbohydrates become active Let us learn the function of villi in digestive system. The process of transporting the digestion of products from the intestine into blood through the wall of intestine is called absorption. Internally, the intestinal wall contains a number of fingers-like projections called as villi. The villi increases the surface area for absorption. Blood vessels and lymph vessels are present inside the villi in the form of a network. The digestion of products are first absorbed by the villi and then passes into the blood vessels and lymph vessels. With the help of small intestine, the maximum amount of digested food is sent to various parts of the body through blood. Remaining amount of the food material passes to the large intestine. Large intestine reabsorbs maximum amount of water from the remaining food material this material is then passed through the anus which is the last part of the alimentary canal the process of passing of undigested material from the body through the anus is called defecation food that comes out from the anus still contains significant amounts of proteins fats and carbohydrates roughages or fibers of either carbohydrates or proteins